Welcome to the Tiffany Micah podcast. What we do here is build the strength and courage in you to accomplish your big dreams and goals in your sport. No longer will you feel limited. You won't feel you're not good enough. You won't question whether you will make it. Those doubts will disappear because you will have the competitive edge over your opponents and leave them in your wake. And the bonus is others will notice. Listen up and take notes because I will show you exactly how to do it. Hey there, Tiff here from the Tiffany Micah podcast. Welcome to today's episode. So you know that like things are coming about in your sport and it's time to make some changes and it's to make some changes in the sense of, you know, it's time to improve the technique. It's time to make some changes to that so that you can then advance forward, move forward, improve, uh, accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish with your sport because what you're doing currently with what's going on with the technical aspects of your sport, it's just you're at a plateau, right? You're at a standstill. And the thing is, is it's time to make the change. Now, when you make a change in technique, you think, oh man, that's going to be so hard. Actually, you know what? It's not difficult if you're prepared to make the change. If you're ex- if you're going to accept the fact that you know what, I have to make a change. This is going to be good because this is going to get me into the direction where I want to go. It's going to take me down the path I want to go. It's going to help me perform better. Well, then that's what you want to do. You want to make that change. And I see that a lot with golfers that I teach is that they. Um, you know, they complain a lot about their level of, of golf because they complain that they're not consistent enough. And I will tell you, it doesn't matter what sport or that you're, you know, participating in, you can make changes if you really want to make changes. It's just that some people aren't prepared to do that. And that's okay. Some people aren't prepared to do that. But if this is you and it's time to make some changes in the technique, it's going to be uh, challenging. And the reason that it's going to feel challenging for you is because it won't feel right. It will feel awkward. It will feel weird. And I always say to people when they're learning something uh, with regards to tennis or, or golf, especially because they're the two main sports that I teach is that, yep, you know what, if you're not feeling awkward and you're not feeling uncomfortable, you're probably not doing it right. So when people especially take up golf, cause I find that golf can be one of those most awkward and uncomfortable sports in the beginning. I would say, if you're not feeling awkward and uncomfortable, then you won't be doing it correctly because it will make you feel that way. I know what it makes you feel like because I, that's how I felt when I learned to play. And I'm a sports person, that's my thing. So it won't feel right. Now, like I've said before, the reason that it's time has come for you to make some changes in your technique is because you've plateaued. And when you hit a plateau, it's telling you, hello, it's time to make some changes because we want to improve. So that's what we want to make sure that we're working on. Okay. Really, really important. Exciting thing that I got to witness on the weekend was my 13 year old niece, Evie. She went to a a swimming clinic where they worked on uh, the technical aspects of her breaststroke because that was what that clinic was. It was all on breaststroke. And I thought, oh, that'd be really cool because what they do is they film the, um, you know, the, the kids in the water swimming and then they show you exactly what's going on. So when I got there, I missed the actual filming part of it, but I got there when, when the um, coach there was explaining to the, to the kids, there was only about five kids in, in that around the same age group, around that 13, 14 year old age group. And he was showing them, uh, what they were doing in their technique. So the first two, 
kids that were on. There was a boy and then there was a girl um, that came on. So he was showing them what, what happens when they're doing specific things through the breaststroke. And I was able to pick up some things when he was explaining it because when he then showed my niece Evie in that, he showed her the um, the areas in which that that was lacking that was causing the drag in the water, and I was really chuffed because I actually got to see that uh, I identified that because I knew what to look for. I identified that really quickly, so I, that was really cool because that's my thing. I, I geek out on technique. I love technique, which you've probably figured that out. Um, so, so that, I found that really, really fascinating. And, and then what happened after he explained to the kids, uh, how to improve and each, each kid was spoken to individually. They went through the, through the swimming and, and areas in which they could improve on their swimming. So then they took them back into the pool and then the, he gave them drills to work on to help them improve things. So well, like with my niece, it was, you know, getting her higher out of the water, getting her hips to sit up higher so that the hips don't sit down low in the water and that's what causes the drag. So he's showing her ways in which she could do that. And it was really fascinating to watch because I was watching the progress. So from the beginning of when she went into the water to the last two laps of what she was doing in the water. You could see the improvement already. It was really great. But when she got out of the water, she said, oh, wow, you know, that was so cool. But she said, I was trying to do everything at once. So that's the thing that we don't want to try and do is when we make changes to technique, and this is what this uh, episodes about for you today is when you make the decision that yep and you're accepting of the fact that it's time to change the technique improve the technique refine the technique however you want to look at that for your sport then we don't want to do it all at once because it can be quite overwhelming so I've put some steps together for you on what you could look for uh, to help you improve that that change process that you're going to go through when making changes to your technique. So here we go. So step one. So step one is to identify where the problem is or identify what the frustration is or identify what's actually holding you back in what's going on, this plateau that you've hit. Now, when if I say that to people that play golf, they I say, well, what's your problem oh it's consistency so but it's actually not consistency it's the fact that there's something that's not working so I want you to think about being really specific so that's what I then say to the the people I'm talking to is like well okay well what what is it that's not making consistent oh you know I'm not chipping onto the green consistently great that's an area that then tells me that that we can work on or I can't get the ball out of the bunker regularly. Great, okay, then that's what we need to then go and work on. So what ha- what's happening for you, because I want you to be thinking about with your sport is, is don't generalize for one, okay? Really look at, okay, what, is, what are the things? Oh, I'm not tackling really well in soccer or football and I'm not, I'm not passing the ball correctly to, to, to my teammate or team, team person. So you want to be being very specific or I'm not, I'm not kicking the ball in the air as high as, as I could because I'm not hitting a part of the ball that needs to be struck. All right. So I want you to be very, very specific on, on what it is. So what we, what we're really looking at today is more likely what the technical error is or the technical fault is. Of course, there's going to be a lot of mental things around it, like what your mental process is that, that goes on around it. But what I want you to do first is actually start looking at what is the technical error that's going on or what's the technical fault that's going on? Because the whole idea is what we want to be looking at for looking at this for is so that you're becoming more mechanically efficient. So we want to look at what is not efficient in what you're doing in the, in the skills in your sport so that then you can go, <clears throat> excuse me, so then you can go and then make the changes that needs to be done. So step one, like I just said, is identify what the problem is, right? We want to be very specific. Number two, 
What we want to do here is we want to ask the question is how can I overcome this problem? So I want you to be thinking about it. How could you overcome this problem? Well, there's lots of ways that you can overcome this problem. So here's, here are some suggestions. Get tuition, right? Go and get some individual lessons. Don't go to a group session. Go to an individual session where it's one-on-one. -on -one, so it's just you and the coach and, and they can actually look at what's actually going on in there so that they can help you identify what the problem is. It's too hard to see it on your own, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. So it's really good to go and get some one-on-one -on -one tuition. Second thing that you could look at is video analysis. Get videoed, have a look at actually what's going on so that you can actually see where the, the technical fault's coming up in, in what you're doing in your skill. And then what you then do is once you know what that technical aspect is, where that fault is, because you've seen it, then you know what you need to look for to help improve it. And that's what that, you know, the coach um, that will do that for you. So that's what you want to then do is then by that video analysis is you want to learn how to do it correctly so that you become more mechanically efficient, right? So number two is to identify how you can overcome the problem. Then step three is where do I start to make the change? Now that, that's where this can be quite overwhelming is like, oh man, I don't really know how to start to make it. So remember, I was just talking about my niece, Evie, she got back in the pool and she was there was four major points that came up with her breaststroke. And she came out of the pool and she said, oh, I was trying to do everything all at once. And I got confused and didn't feel right and didn't know what to do. So, so when that situation uh, happens and it does because you're going oh my god there's all these points that I've got to focus on it can be really overwhelming so the first thing that you want to be able to do here is write down all the points that's been identified that needs work so it's great that you're getting feedback from the coach that's saying look you know we need to work on this 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 and this for example so go and write those points down that you need to work on now, if the coach is really good, what they will actually do for you is help you go through the process of where the changes need to happen. So for example, when I teach, you know, I'll identify a problem with the, the person that I'm working with, and then we break it down and we work on the individual area, like or individual points first. So it's step by step. Okay, so what you want to, why, that's why I want you to be thinking of like, write down all the points down that need work on improvement so that you know what they are. And then step by step, you implement one at a time, right? That's why I say step by step. So you're doing it in small chunks. So what you want to be able to do is do um, point one and work on that and just have that as the focus. Doesn't matter if the other three points are not coming together yet because they're not going to, but we need to work on one thing at a time. Get that right, get the feel right with it, understand how it needs to operate, then work on the next step and see, no, do it that way. Work on the next step, right? Go through that next point. Then go through the third point. You might only have four. Four is probably plenty. You probably don't want more than that. Um, and then work on that fourth point. So work on them all individually first. Then see if you can start piecing maybe point one and point two together. So you're starting to um, get them to, to flow a little bit more. And then slowly over time, you start putting those small chunks of that one thing at a time that you're working on. And then you can then start slowly putting it together. That's, that would be the best way to make the technical change. So it doesn't become so um, overwhelming for you. Now, the, the things that I want you to be aware of, though, is when you go through this process of making changes in your technique, doesn't matter even if it's a mental change in, in how you're thinking, what you want to be able to understand, though, it's not automatic yet. So it's not just going to happen for you because it just doesn't work that way. There's a process that you're going to have to go through in order to get to the point where it is does become more automatic for you. It takes time to build it. So I want you to understand too that it does does and will take time to 
rectify the technique because there's specific things that you're probably doing before and it's going to take a while to learn this new thing that's going to override what you were doing before give yourself some permission to build and refine it it's okay you take steps out and go you know what that's okay it's all right that I'm not performing this so well like I felt like I was before because what this is going to do is this is going to help me overtake where I was before so give yourself permission to build and refine it refine it uh will be frustrating for you it will feel awkward it will feel like you might be going backwards at times as well because you're having to think about it you're having to work through a process and you know what that's okay because by you being diligent like that working through the technical changes that is where you're going to improve the what needs to be improved so that you're going to conquer that mountain that you see that's holding you back and you'll be able to climb over that mountain and then go down the other side and go whoo I've got it and then you can then make, keep moving forward I'm not saying there's not more mountains that you're going to have to climb because there probably will be but you'll have conquered that one okay so you want to conquer that mountain so what I want you to be able to think about here today is is trust what you're learning trust it work on it keep on uh, refining it chunk it down keep it simple work on one thing at a time and you will get there okay just have the faith have the trust give yourself permission it's okay if you're going to make mistakes with it it's okay if it's feeling awkward and uncomfortable not a problem that's all part of the learning process okay we've got to stumble a bit before we can get back up and then climb that mountain and that is all okay so the three main points here the three steps for you is one identify where the problem is two what can you do to overcome the problem and three where do you start to make that change so i hope you enjoyed today's episode love it if you could share with me what you liked best about what you heard today if you got friends that you know that would benefit from these episodes please share them because we want to build the reach of potential with tiff community as big as we possibly can and always remember this dream big believe in you go after your dreams take care talk soon before you go Do you want to build confidence, belief, strength and courage in you to go after your big dreams in your life and in your sport? If you do, go to www.tiffany-mika.com and get a copy of my book, Focus, How to Reach Your Potential in Sport, Business and Life. I look forward to seeing you there. Dream big, believe in you, go after your dreams.